Hey, welcome to After the Sermon. I'm Pastor Aaron. This is Pastor Kyle. We're so glad that you're with us. This is just an amazing time where we get to dive further into the sermon that we talked about on Sunday morning and really recap and then go into questions that you have, that you guys have, about maybe what God was speaking to you. Because we know the Holy Spirit speaks to every single one of us, specifically when we're going through God's Word. And so we just have this time for you guys to talk to us, for us to talk to you, and to, to just take this time to um, dive further into what, what God's doing. Yeah, if you weren't here with us last week, uh, the platform of this show is um, after Sunday morning sermon. We ask you to send us any questions you have. We then take those questions, and then throughout the show, we address them. Um, but before we do that, we're going to ask Pastor Aaron to give a little summary of the morning message in case you weren't able to see that. Um, so can you tell us what this morning's sermon was about? Yeah, so again, the whole series revolves around the idea of John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And what we know is because of that and the, the meat of the gospel that we find in that verse that it empowers our lives and it empowers everything else we see in the Bible. That is ground zero for everything that we um, use to, to move forward in life. And so this week we talked about Malachi 3.16. Malachi 3.16, it's a little interesting because it's in the Old Testament, but John 3.16 is in the New Testament. But what we know is God is uh, God who's outside of time. And so uh, Malachi 3.16 is Malachi, who is a prophet, but also a preacher, and he's talking to the Jews. The Jews have just come back to Jerusalem, to the Promised Land. Uh, they've been in exile for, thir for 70 years, and they were coming back now, but things are completely different. The, the Jerusalem that they knew is no longer the Jerusalem. In fact, the temple's about to be destroyed. Uh, their heart broke. Actually, the temple's already been destroyed. Uh, they're completely heartbroken seeing what's happened to this land that they love so much, they held so dearly. And Malachi is telling them that God loves you, and the Jews are saying, no, he doesn't. Look at all the terrible things that are happening. And there's so much uncertainty that's happening in Malachi 3.16. There's frustration, there's anger, there's fear, there's unanswered questions. And I think it's the same with us a lot of times, that uh, we're going through a time right now where we have unanswered questions. God, how could you allow this to happen? This is uh, scary. This is uncertain. And we live in such an uncertain world, not just because of the virus that we're all having to deal with, but just the world in general is an uncertain place. And the question that we asked is, how do you find uh, certainty in an uncertain world? And we believe that you find that through John 3.16, but when you look at Malachi 3.16, you see how intimately involved God is in every single one of our lives, that he has this book, and this book, it has all the good deeds that you've ever done. How amazing is that, that there's, that God sees these Israelites, and in the midst of the darkness and the fear, and all of their friends very, very much frustrated with God and grumbling about God, these this one set, this group of, of believers in God, they get together and they talk about the goodness of God and all the good things that God has done. And God sees it. And when God sees it, he writes down all of the names of the people and he writes down the deeds that they did. And how amazing is it that we know that God, that he's watching what we do. And he sees when, when you do something and you speak of his name and you talk about the things that he's done in your life and, and he writes that down because he's so proud of you. And so that's really the gist of what the sermon was about. It was about uh, how God knows us and how because we know God is intimately involved in our lives that we can have confidence in an unsecure um, world. And um, another thing that we want to do is not just expand from Aaron's point of view. We want to expand from our point of view, your mm -hmm. point of view. So I'm going to talk about what I kind of took away from three, uh, Malachi 3.16, but we want to hear from you and what you took away from the sermon. So we're going to put a slide up, and we want you to email us what you took away so that um, we're getting what we're missing from Sunday is hearing from you. Mm -hmm. and, and we're filled by hearing from you and how the sermon speaks to you, and, and we want to be able to encourage you through that. So make sure you email us at info at jesuschurch.life. And we'll, can't
can't wait to hear from you. Yeah, and you know, something that I took away from Malachi 316 was just having that encouragement from John 316 to read that um, those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And I think it's important to note that it says to one another. God just doesn't want us to speak and be alone and do nothing. He wants us to be in fellowship, do things together, which is hard in these times, but there are ways to get around that. What we're doing right here, let's speak together. Send us your questions. Send us what you did during the week. We want to hear from you. We miss you so much. And this is just one way we can connect with you. So um, that was one thing I walked away with. Another thing that I walked away with, as um, Aaron mentioned, is what we're doing is being recorded and without the context of John 3, 16, I can take that as, oh, God's taking a book and writing down everything I did, so I have to be worried about it. That's not it. But then also sometimes we take what um, we hear, it's not what we do, it's what Jesus did. And we'll take that and think, well, what does it matter what I do? If, if it's all about what he did, then there's no importance to what I do in my life. But this shows us that's not true. Yeah. What we do is important. It's so important that God's writing it down. I mean, you think of a kid who's growing up, what do parents love to do? They love to make scrapbooks. They love to uh, now post everything on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then even when the memory comes up, we share it because yeah. those things that happen in our lives and in our kids' lives are important. And so much so with God that what we do in our life is important. So don't think that just because what he, it's not, we can't do anything to get our salvation. But that doesn't mean our, our what we do isn't important. Exactly. So from Malachi 3.16 in the context of the Bible, just some that I walked away with knowing it's what so I do is important and what I do is something that I get to rejoice and celebrate later on with God. Yeah. And that just fills me up and back to my first point, doing it together. Yeah. Let's find ways to do things together that lift up each other mm -hmm. and just uh, reflects the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I love about this forum is Sometimes there's things in the sermon that I can't really emphasize or I'm afraid maybe that point got lost in the mix of things. And so this is a chance where I can just sort of emphasize on something uh, maybe that was in the sermon that maybe seemed like it, it didn't get expanded on enough. And one thing I really wanted to drive home was so many times you and I, we go through times and we think, well, God is there, and yeah, maybe God loves me, but he's not close to me, and I can't feel him right now. Uh, and one verse that really stuck out to me that blew my mind was in Psalms 56, 8, where it says, you keep track of all of my sorrows, that God knows all of the pain and the suffering that we've gone through, but it doesn't stop there. It says, you've collected my tears in a bottle, which just shows that he's right there with you. If God can be close enough to collect your tears, that means he's right in the midst of everything that we're going through. It says you have recorded each one of them in your book. Why? Because he cares. Because he loves you. He cares about your struggles. He cares about when you're not feeling good. He cares about when you can't sleep at night or you don't get enough sleep because you're up worrying. He cares about all of those things so much that he records them. But not only does he record them, but he takes the time to walk us through everything that we have to deal with. And I just think that it's so powerful to see how God loves us. And he's so intimately involved in all of our lives that he, he would do that. And the, um, the point that I brought up was where Jesus and he is sorrowful because of Lazarus. And Lazarus has died and Jesus, it says he wept which so many times it's so odd to think that because he's about to resurrect this guy from the dead. So why would Jesus be sad? And the point that I think we need to remember is just because Jesus knew the outcome, it didn't lessen the pain in the moment. And I've heard multiple times, well, if you had faith, you wouldn't be sad right now when something happens or there's uncertainty and you're just struggling. And just because you know the outcome, just because I know the outcome, we know that God has given us victory. It doesn't lessen the pain in the moment. And that's okay. Because Jesus went through the same thing. But we still walk in confidence. Why? Because we have the power of John 3.16. That God has loved us so much that he gave his son. And that's why we celebrate every week 
together talking about the goodness of Jesus because he does have victory. It doesn't lessen the feelings in the moment, but I want all of us to know that in the midst of our uncertainty and sometimes fear and frustration and even anger with God, that he's right there collecting our tears, writing down how he's walking us through those things, that he's okay with you struggling through it. He just wants to teach you and help you to learn as well. Awesome. And talking about feeling um, and, and how do we move on, what, what are, how do we react to what we're feeling? And one of the questions that was sent in was someone feels like God is absent at times, like Israel did, yeah. um, and she, she doesn't feel like he talks to her. Even though she, she feels like there's, in her life, there's fruit that's evident, she, she feels like there's missing, there's something missing by not yeah. hearing from him more clearly. So is, is she missing something if she's yeah. not hearing from him more clearly? And is there something she can do that, um, she, that she, to help her feel like she is connected to God? Well, I think going on the journey with Jesus, I mean, it is a journey. And what we do know is the more that we have a relationship with him, the more we trust him is the more that we hear him and the more we become like him. It reminds me in um, 1 Corinthians 13, it says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And that word known there means fully known that I will know all things. Obviously right now we don't know all things, but the closer we get to Jesus, and you gotta remember that when it talks about a mirror, it's not like a mirror that you and I see where it's perfect, like you can see every distinguishing feature about you. That, they didn't have those back then. They had like polished um, metal or they would have a, a, a river, or a body of water that they could look into. And so they couldn't see Perfectly, But what that's telling us, what Paul tells us there, is that the more we get, the closer we get to Jesus, the more clearly we will see him. And as we see him, then we will see ourselves more clearly. So, yeah, and we all are missing something. And one day when we see him face to face, we'll have that. But as we walk out our relationship with Jesus, we do learn to hear him better. Um, but I feel the same thing that, gosh, I, I wish I could hear him more clearly. I wish I could um, have his voice um, audibly uh, in my daily when I pray. And that doesn't, that doesn't always happen. But what I do know is the closer I get to Jesus, the more the, that I seek out the Holy Spirit, the easier it is to see uh, and to hear his voice. And sometimes it's just seeing... Uh, the provision he has in our life, that's how he speaks to us, because God speaks in so many different ways. It's not just an audible voice. There are multiple ways that God speaks to us, and it's understanding those things, recognizing them, identifying them, and really embracing them as, God, yeah, thank you so much to, for speaking to me. I think it's important to also re remember our feelings versus facts. If you continue to read in Malachi 3.16 and 3.17, he says, they shall be mine, yeah. my jewels. So even though we don't feel like we're his jewels, I don't feel like I'm, I'm a jewel at every time, you know, all the times. Um, is, uh, Israel didn't feel like it either. Yeah. In, in the midst of suffering, being assaulted, they didn't feel like they um, were jewels. They were just uh, discouraged. But the, our feelings, their feelings, doesn't change the fact that we are their jewels. Mm -hmm. So when we don't feel close to God, we have to rely on the word, rely on the fact that God tells us we are his, we are, we can be close to him through Jesus. So even though we don't feel it, we have to remember that our feelings aren't um, evidence if we are close to him or not, because mm -hmm. his word trumps our feelings. Yeah. Um, another question we have is, um, talk about the book of remembrance. Is that a literal book or is that a symbolic book? And was it only for the Jews or for everyone? Yeah, it, it talks about a couple of different books in uh, Revelation, and Daniel, here in Malachi. We hear about different books. Now, in heaven, do they chop down trees and make paper and bind it together and use ink pens, ballpoint pens? I, I don't know. I, I don't think we can know. But what I do know is that God writes down the things that we do. 
And so whether it's figurative or literal, I believe that he literally has some type of a book that he writes in. Now, is it made of paper and leather binding? I don't know that, but the whole function of it is a book. And in that book, there are all the great things that you and I do and none of the bad things that we do because all those things, the Bible says, your sins are from as far as the east is from the west. It also says that uh, they're no more because it's like they're on the bottom of the ocean floor. And so is there a literal book? I would tend to say yes. We don't really know, but uh, Malachi, there's a lot of pretty literal stuff that he talks about in there. So I would tend to believe that there is a book. Yeah. And But to walk away, like we should just walk away with knowing that he records it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's literal or symbolic, I think yeah. the point to walk away with is he does record it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. our, our last question is, how can we connect with other believers and speak with one another in the current restrictions we face? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. I think we're all feeling that lack of community and, and virtual hugs are pretty lame, if you ask me, virtual high fives. Um, but I think we just have to make an extra effort. I, I mean, you can do, we have to use every resource that we have, Zoom meetings, uh, just make that effort to connect with people and just let them know how, how, ask them that you're thinking about them, that you're praying for them, that you love them, that you care about them, that you miss them. Uh, just like we miss you guys so much and uh, we're trying to do whatever we can to, to connect with you and we'd love for you to connect with us in any, any way, any platform that, that, we can, that we can connect with you. Yeah, and we have to realize too, we're in a broken world. Mm -hmm. There is no situation that's perfect for us to connect. And we're always called to make the best of our situations. Let's be the salt, let's be the light. So whether there's restrictions of um, staying at home, going out, or um, if it was like a few months ago, we're always trying to make the best of our situation. There's always gonna be obstacles. Jesus tells us that we're always gonna get tried. There's always gonna be tribulation. We can't let those situations tear us down. Mm -hmm. Let's let how we live our lives be the thing that shines in these hard times. Don't let the hard times bring down how you live in your life. So let's always just encourage one another. Like Pastor Aaron was saying, when someone comes um, is in your heart, reach out to them. Try to figure out a way to connect with them because God's putting them in your heart because they probably need someone to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I've seen God answer prayers through his people. I think I see that more than through miraculous, unexplainable events. Yeah. So if someone comes in your heart, I encourage you just to please reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we can end it on that. Um, is there anything that we can look forward to coming up next week? Yeah, so I, I think that we're going to be going through Matthew 3.16. And so read through that and get your questions ready. This is what it says, and it might change up, so you'll just have to be there and listen or watch to, to find out for sure. But it says, when he had been baptized, talking about Jesus, Jesus came immediately out of the water and behold, the heavens opened up to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. So uh, yeah, Matthew three sixteen, I believe is what we're going to be on next Sunday morning. And uh, you want to close us in prayer. Thank you so much for being with us and just make sure you dive into this next week. This is something that we really think can be a benefit to our church body and um, start working through those questions and, and we'll see you next week. Let's pray. Dear God, uh, we thank you for this time. Um, whether it's conventional or not, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together um, centered around you and what you're doing in our lives. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to go through the word and read it um, interpreting the word with the word, seeing how the context of John 3.16 allows us to see other uh, scripture and, and what you're truly trying to say with us. So we pray that whatever scripture we read through and, and if we misinterpret it, we pray that as we go through those again here and in the future that you just wipe that clean and give us a fresh soil plant that seed of John 3.16 so that when we read anything from here on out, that we're hearing it with true intentions. 
that you wanted us to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just pray for our community. We pray for those around us that you will use us to lift them up, God. And we just pray for um, everything that's going on that we 